hi uh, welcome to another edition of calculus 3 today we are going to talk about uh, quadratic surfaces let's go and take a look at this very interesting topic okay so in the previous lecture we said quadratic uh, means power 2 so we have a power 2 polynomial and uh, it is in three dimensions so there are x y and z and there can be products of these things x y terms the term by itself and just an x or just a number so if you count it you see there are 10 different terms in this equation of course that's going to be a bit too complicated for us to talk about so we are going to take a look at uh, some simplified cases first uh, major simplification is that uh, we are going to look at these surfaces at an angle so that uh, in some sense they are going to be parallel to the axes and that's going to make the, uh, the middle three terms to become zero and go away and uh, our uh, investigation is going to be that much easier at the next level uh, we have we are going to aim at these other three in case uh, the the shape we are looking at has a center by putting the center at the origin we can manage to get rid of all these three and our equation becomes very simple x squared plus by squared plus cz squared equal to some number in some cases uh, the shape doesn't have a center by uh, moving it around we can make it to look like one of these equations for example z is equal to ax squared plus by squared Okay, last time we also mentioned that uh, depending on the signs of these coefficients, we get different kind of surfaces. In this case, we have four possibilities. To make it specific, I just wrote down some numbers so uh, it, it would be easier to talk about them. The case of ellipsoid uh, looks something like this with all the coefficients positive, or at least we can arrange them to be positive. Hyperboloid of one sheet assuming the right hand side is positive on the left you have only one of these coefficients being negative hyperboloid of two sheets again right hand side is positive on the left we have two negative terms and elliptic cone right hand side is zero and the signs here are going to be different in this case we have two possibilities one is called elliptic paraboloid and that happens when both of these are positive for example z is equal to 2x squared plus 3y squared and hyperbolic paraboloid is in the case when these two are negative okay it's one thing to just give uh, some names to these things and another one is to understand why is it that such a dear terminology is picked how do we uh, come with uh, such a designation a hyperboloid and one sheet or hyperboloid and two sheets and why is this thing called a cone cone and that one's called an ellipsoid and so on our favorite way of approaching this question is going to be a slice and trace method meaning we are going to take these kind of equations we are going to imagine that we are slicing the resulting surface by a plane and then look at the trace that is caused by that slicing plane by looking at the variety of these slices we can come up to an understanding of what the surface looks like and at least why these that kind of designations are made in these cases so of course there are software that we can use to look at these things and quickly come up with a conclusion as to one thing or another but the idea is that we are trying to train our mind so that we can make an association between a formula and its geometric properties by re reasoning uh, as opposed to just looking at the picture but uh, let's go ahead make it clear as to what we mean by slice and trace and then we come back and uh, do some examples for example, I'm going to take some of these or some of these things and try to bring ourselves to a conclusion why this type of terminology is going to be correct. So let's go on to that uh, nice software we talked about before, uh, Calc Plot 3D. 
So here I have a cylinder. You remember we talked about these things last time. If you have a curve, say on X, Y plane, and from each point of that curve you go straight up in parallel to the Z axis, you create a cylinder. Okay, a yeah, simple thing to look at. You take a piece of paper and you bend it, kind of looks like this. Now suppose we want to do a slice and trace. So I have this uh, uh, surface Z equal to Y squared and then uh, I uh, want to slice it with a plane Z equal to 1. So here is what we mean. So when we slice it, we are having a plane. This is the plane. It comes and slices the, uh, the surface we have and we can see the trace of this slice, which is this. Well, this trace is a curve. These are the curves we have studied in calculus and pre-calculus and such. By imagining these uh, curves and kind of stitching them together in our mind, we can come to some understanding about what the curve looks like. So it's kind of a mental exercise trying to connect uh, properties of a formula to the shape of that formula. Let's go ahead and see how we do this thing on pencil and paper as opposed to relying on, on the software. So uh, uh, maybe we just take these things one at a time and uh, do them and see how e each case turns out. So the first one was like what? Uh, let's take it 2x squared plus 3y squared plus say 4z squared is equal to 5. Okay, suppose I want to slice this thing uh, by some plane. Uh, well, can I slice it at z equal to 10? What do you think? What will happen if I take this curve and this surface and slice it with a plane which has the equation z just equals to 10. So again, our deal was that you think about it a moment, uh, try to uh, be a Jimmy Neutron or John Neutron, uh, think about it as hard as you can, uh, come up with some ideas as to what's happening. So my question was like this, can I slice this thing with z equal to 10? Well, z equal to 10, z squared becomes 100, this becomes 400 already, and you have some other positive items added to it. It cannot become 5, obviously. So z equal to 10 does not, uh, does not cut the surface. By similar reasoning, we see that this is a finite surface, meaning uh, like a ball or something. Uh, you, you cannot go far out and expect uh, uh, this surface to exist out there. It stops somewhere. In any direction that you go, it stops. So that's easy to see that, well, the minimum that these things can be is zero, and therefore z squared has to be less than 5 over 4. So if you want to slice this thing with anything, make sure your z squared be it becomes less than 5 over 4. You go beyond that, there's no, sli uh, there's no slice, there's no trace. Similarly, y squared also is less than 5 third, and x squared is less than 5 half, and so on. So we already came to a conclusion based on reasoning that this is a finite shape. It doesn't go on forever. It's not like a plane or you know, a cone or something that goes on. on. Uh, it stops somewhere. Okay, next. Uh, well, if I do take a z that is less than z squared that's less than 5 over 4, for example, z equal to 1 and a half and stuff like that, those are, or minus 1, they're all okay, because in all those cases z squared becomes less than 5 fourth. Suppose I do slice it, what would the trace going to look like? For example, let's take z equal to 1, nice number. So by now I have 2x squared plus 3y squared, now 5 minus 4z squared, I bring the z to this side, when z is equal to 1, this thing uh, accidentally becomes 1 again. So who is this? 
2x squared plus 3y squared equals 1. You remember from the uh, last lecture we had, we talked about this kind of curves from uh, calculus, precalculus, and so on. These were quadratic curves. We need to know curves to be able to know surfaces, of course. Um, so what was this? Again, let me nod you to think about it and not be just uh, uh, listening, but a participant. So <clears throat> I wish I could call you or by your names and ask you individually. Uh, unfortunately, our technology doesn't have that. So uh, what is this? Uh, you re let me just give you another nudge. We had another uh, nice thing here. You remember we had this one? Uh, let's see. We are not looking at that. We are looking at this one. Is that right? And then you play with these things. A and B. In a standard form, the numbers in the denominator, they indicate the so-called semi-major, semi-minor axis and so on, or just some numbers. So long as these two are positive, you get an ellipse. Okay, so we have an ellipse. So this, this is an ellipse. I, I slice this thing, I get an ellipse. Now you can go play with more variety of this thing. You realize however I slice this thing, I'm going to get a, the trace is going to be an ellipse. So it stands to reason to call it an ellipsoid. However you look at it, it's an ellipse. It's essentially like a ball that has been squished on this side and that side of it. And uh, so still has that character, but uh, now we call it an ellipsoid. So, in general, if you want to slice it, uh, so many cases you see these problems say, okay, instead of uh, picking on a particular number, we just go and pick an arbitrary parameter, z squared, uh, z, z sub zero, or just call it z to prevent a, a, another letter, but just to indicate that we froze z at some number, then I can come and say this is 2x squared plus 3y squared is equal to 5 minus 4z uh, sub 0 squared. And then if you want to cast this in the style of the standard equation of an ellipse, here's how you do it. You divide by this, you say 5 minus 4z 0 squared and bring the 2 down here as well. And do the same thing with y, so standard form everything comes to denominator 5 minus 4 0 squared over 3 and equals to 1. So this whole thing, whatever it is, it's going to be our a squared. This is going to be our b squared, whatever these numbers are. And they have to be positive because we are keeping z squared less than 5 4. So these are uh, staying positive. At the minimum, they become 0. At the moment that these things become 0, meaning at the moment that z squared becomes 5 over 4, our ellipse is going to be shrinking to just a point. So if I keep z, z 0 at 0, I'll get the biggest ellipse I can have. And as I go out close to this, uh, my ellipse is going to shrink. So that's the style of reasoning you want to develop for yourself, that, that you can talk about the formula and imagine what the slice is going to be. And I know it's a hard sell, it's a, and that software is over there, just go look at it. Why are you torturing us like this? Um, well, you want to build your, your mind and you want to build the reasoning from the formula to the shape. And imagine what if this thing was in four dimension, five dimension and something, and then um, what are you going to do then? There is no software to show you something in four dimensions. So reasoning and algebra and us is like a, a cane for us. Uh, for a, we are blind. We are blind in high dimensions, and uh, reasoning is going to show us the way uh, in those high dimensions. Now you might say, "Well, I don't, I'm not going to go to any high dimensions and stuff like that," but. Uh, uh, we are, we are just developing our reasoning ability. Now, uh, since you insist, we go and uh, do it your way. So let's go ahead and see what this uh, software is going to tell us. Uh, let's go back here. So let me just uh, make this thing quiet for a moment. And uh, 
let's go pick uh, one of those equations that we had 2x squared maybe I change them so that it fits in uh, uh, so I might deviate from what I wrote over there uh, plus what was it 4z squared yeah was equal to 5 press return okay it's reasonable I don't have to mm, play with it uh, so it, it looks like a ball that has been squished uh, this way and that way or a melon maybe and then you take the knife and you want to cut this melon and you're going to cut it in a plane okay so our slicing style is just go straight down and uh, so here is uh, z equal to 1 we said it's okay z equal to 1 uh, uh, he, here is uh, the slice you see uh, it's just leaving a little bit out here now if you reveal it uh, I wish it was in a different color maybe if you look at it the other well let's go maybe uh, come closer to the origin so 0 0.5 maybe uh, okay it's a little bit clear now uh, the the slice here the slice here is an ellipse we can get all the details of it if I come close to this tip what was it z squared was 5 fourth so if I come close to that uh, what's 5 fourth 5 fourth is 1.25 square root of that is uh, what's the square root of 1.25 is uh, 1.1 almost uh, so if you come close to that see uh, we we almost touching it at the very uh, edge at the very tip of it let's let's go a little bit uh, deeper in so you see something again uh, as i mentioned uh, last time uh, to get a better picture you want to increase the number of points but then that's going to slow down the computer so uh, you make sure you have a good graphics card then you're probably going to do a lot better than i'm doing so as I increase this Z I'm coming to this uh, point to this tip of this shape and the um, ellipse shrinks to a point so what we have to do is to build an association in our heart about what we are practicing our mind and what happens out there in the picture itself and we have to verify back and forth back and forth to make sure we are convinced about all the, all the details okay uh, so let's go do another one of these things so, so we are kind of satisfied that this thing it better be called ellipsoid because however you cut it you're going to get an ellipse it looks like a ball that has been squished and then uh, so on and so forth uh, next up uh, on this type of uh, things we said okay if one of them is a negative then it, it entirely changes the pictures like uh, you just uh, qualitatively different deal now uh, first of all we cannot say this thing is bounded anymore it doesn't fit in any box that you can make it is going to cut through any box any any uh, ceiling you try to put on this thing it's going to break through that ceiling and go past it can you see the reason for that why is it that this thing can just have a runaway behavior uh, what do you think hmm? so can we tell oh, well that's not what I meant to do uh, why do we know this shape goes on and on and there is no stop to it well some aspect of the equation tells you <coughs> previously we were saved by the fact that these are all positive so they have to all stay below five and then each of them it was giving us a limit for uh, x or y or z but here that it, this is a subtraction so this can be as large as it wants and this can keep up with that and the difference can be five so both of these can be large numbers just the difference is five so if you want to play the game that we played last time I can take the z to the other side so it becomes 2x squared plus 3y squared and that's now equal to 5 plus 4z squared so you are thinking about I'm not going to write z sub 0 just so that avoid uh, crowding of our formulas but we are just assuming that we are trying to slice it with a particular z value 
uh, and if you want to see the ellipse well it's going to be the ellipse is going to be x squared if you want to write it in uh, standard format 5 plus 4z squared over 2 plus y squared over same thing 5 plus 4z squared over 3 is equal to 1 so we are just writing it in the standard format so these were our a squared and b squared now if you choose z uh, large numbers well these semi minor semi minor axis are also going to be large and then your ellipse is just getting larger and larger as you go far out so if I take z for example 10 then 4z squared is about 400 405 divided by 2 some number around say 200 or something you take square root of that some you get the axis to be around 14 and this one will be some other number so as I take z if I take z to be a thousand well that is going to tell me that uh, my uh, axis also in the neighborhood of 1000 or something so that ellipse is getting bigger and bigger so let's try to uh, play with a, uh, a pencil and a paper and try to visualize what's going on so I take uh, this coordinate system uh, and I say okay if I slice it at z equal to 0 I have some uh, little ellipse its uh, major axis and minor axis is decided by five halves and five third so I'll, I'll get some uh, uh, I get some ellipse down here fine this is the negative side of it now suppose I go and pick uh, z to be some number say two or three or something uh, both these axes are getting bigger so the ellipse that I have here is just that much bigger and if I go further up it's just going to be that much bigger again so this the trace of the slice just gets bigger and bigger now if I go down at negative z's well negative z when get square it it becomes positive and whatever happened up here is going to happen down here so we are going to have a, a big uh, ellipse down here and then a bigger one down here and so on so we see that going up and down we have these type of imagine maybe like a bunch of rubber bands as you go higher up is bigger rubber bands and so on and uh, so we first of all we realize is like as we sweep from bottom to top uh, these things are all over the place so uh, we get a sense that this is one single surface there doesn't seem to be any cut anywhere in it so that idea that this is a uh, one sheet uh, thing starts to form in our head that uh, this thing all over the place then uh, well we might uh, uh, wonder for ourselves how about slicing it like this like if I am on the x z plane if I just slice this thing in the x z plane uh, what's gonna be the resulting trace well how do I do that uh, what should be the value of y what should be the value of y so that I'm slicing my uh, surface on the x z plane so uh, this is this I want to slice it with this guy what's the equation of this uh, surface uh, this plane if you set y equal to 0 you're the grand prize winner so <clears throat> I want to slice it with this and I already noticed what the slice is going to look like it's kind of like this what kind of a curve is that and I can go back here and slice it here too I mean it's the same plane is going to slice both right and left that of course looks like a hyperbola is that is that right so if y is equal to 0 if y is equal to 0 I have 2x squared minus 4z squared is equal to 5 and remember we talked about these uh, things last time is a hyperbola and hyperbola this when x is positive z negative I have the intersections here on the x-axis no intersection on the z-axis so we are forming an idea look uh, this is 
kind of peculiar looking funnel as a top and a bottom part and there's a hole in it uh, there, inside this is the smallest uh, uh, cross section of this thing and it extends uh, from top to bottom so uh, well what would you call such a thing uh, <clears throat> You don't want to call it ellipsoid. It doesn't look like a, a, a ball or something. The slices are, but the main character of it is that it's a hyperboloid. It's a hyperboloid because certain slices are uh, hyperbolas, and it's just a single sheet. It's not broken up into pieces. So if it's one negative, everybody else positive is a hyperboloid of one sheet. Is that right? Okay, we go ahead uh, and play with our other tool here so so I have uh, what was it there I had Z was negative is that right so I put Z negative and let's make this silent for a while and then I need to make this thing oh, okay isn't that pretty now okay so we have okay so this is a uh, as much of it as as fits in this box is drawn for you uh, you see that hole in the middle and then of course you can slice it at any z that you want so let me go ahead and do the same thing as before let's slice it with z equal to say well that's a peculiar number so let's just put it at one that's our slice uh, you notice that this slice uh, is cutting it in an ellipse if you slice it further out you're going to get much bigger an ellipse if you are slicing it right at the waist of it, waistline, you are going to get the smallest ellipse and so on. So that that's how we go about uh, looking at these type of things. Now let's see if we want to. So uh, I perhaps to keep this thing from running over an hour or something, maybe you can do hyperboloid of two sheets. Uh, uh, perhaps let, let, let me go ahead and take a look at this thing with you and uh, so that uh, <clears throat> how about the following let's do one of these things so I, I uh, ask you guys to read the, through the text for more examples of these things I do maybe one of these uh, let's see uh, say, let's say sketch y uh, say minus 2x squared minus uh, 3 what would be 3z squared is equal to 4 okay what's different uh, now <clears throat> first of all is this thing bounded now when you have these subtractions there they can offset from each other so uh, all numbers can become large and their difference can be some finite numbers so we have no hope of uh, holding this thing in a box uh, at least we need a lot more reasoning than that so one way to look at this thing is to carry all the uh, these other items to the right So this is a little bit more uh, uh, general than uh, the problems that we have here we are retaining one of our numbers so we can do some small modification and bring every now and then some of the problems might have some of these numbers in it and then uh, you can find a way of getting around that issue okay uh, so uh, obviously uh, uh, as x and z as x and z increase toward infinity so will y uh, y obviously is always more than four so here we have a notion of a tip of something so if i have uh, say this is my z-axis this is my typical y-axis this is my uh, x-axis uh, y starts at four 
we, we don't have anything at 3 or 2 or 1 or something because this is always positive and how about as I go out what kind of a shape am I gonna get so I'm gonna uh, try to imagine a slice here now the slices that we are gonna be taking is y equal to some number that number will be more than 4 so for example let's take an example so suppose y is equal to 5 that's my slicing plane so this is say y equal to 5 so if y is equal to 5 then I uh, subtract the 4 from it I get 1 is equal to 2x squared plus 3z squared so what is that again that is the standard uh, ellipse we looked at last time you can bring the twos in the denominator if you want so x squared over one half z squared over one third so what is that well that is going to be uh, some uh, an ellipse so if, what if I go and slice this thing further out well I go slice it out further out <coughs> uh, say y becomes so, so let's pick some number suppose I pick y is equal to say 14 uh, just to keep my numbers easy uh, so when I take it to this side it becomes 10 is equal to 2x squared plus 3z squared write it in the standard format it becomes like this just to see what the axes are going to look like well now our axes got bigger because this is 10 over 2 and this 10 over 3 and over there was uh, 1 over 2 and 1 over 3 so what does that mean it simply means that uh, well we, I have a bigger ellipse when you go out it's going to be a bigger ellipse still well maybe not as ugly as what I drew but it's uh, nice something here now if uh, you connect uh, you know imagine uh, uh, you have this small ellipse here and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and so on so you have a shape like this so why do we call it whatever we call it well it is elliptic this is elliptic how about this as you go around you see that and this this thing this is the shape of a parabola it's easy for you to see how do you see that you said x equal to 0 because we are slicing it with a yz plane you said x equal to 0 and you have y is equal to say 3z squared plus 4 that is obviously a parabola so why should we call this uh, elliptic paraboloid as opposed to the other one which is the hyperbolic uh, paraboloid because when you slice it each of these things become a hyperbola let's just uh, quickly go and take a look at this thing from the other perspective as well uh, so we had here what did we have uh, let me uh, first take this thing out and rearrange my equation so I had what did I have 1 minus 2x squared minus uh, what is it? 3z uh, squared is equal to 4 is it like that yeah okay ah uh, didn't anticipate that what what happened can you guess what happened uh, is the picture blank or well I didn't um, well you tell me what's wrong here of course we uh, remember uh, well let me give everybody a good uh, time think about it why is it that we don't see anything hmm? here we said that, <coughs> that uh, tip of this parabola starts at 4 and goes to the right and the box of this the graph is uh, here the window window is x from minus 2 to 2 and so on so how about uh, moving in the direction we want it to be and what is that direction of y we want to y start at 4 so this is the let's see starts at 1 and go to maybe what should I put here you think uh, 5 is good 
okay so I'm trying to have that tip here so let's see what happens okay this is our y-axis uh, the way we rotated this thing the y-axis is pointing that way and the tip of this uh, uh, parabola that paraboloid that we have is showing up now okay if you want to, to uh, play with the window more and see more of this uh, parabola the slice that you see here so if I take z is equal to uh, well I need to have y is equal to something let's say y equal to Four point five. Well, still, it's not in my box. I have to enlarge the box to see what that slice gonna look like. Uh, easier way of handling all of these things to bring my parabola inside. So let me change the problem a little bit. Suppose I am at uh, one. And then I put my slice also at 1.5 so that you see the slice and it's not hiding so that is the slice this is the parabola and uh, that would have been a nicer problem to begin with maybe okay so the shape of the slice is an ellipse and the essence of this surface is dictated by the cone looking thing is actually a paraboloid and that is the justification for this diagram okay so uh, i hope that you go ahead and uh, play with the other examples which uh, we didn't do and also read the text and play with the uh, homework problems that you have and hopefully it starts to make sense for you okay, until next uh, meeting uh, good luck and god bless